Thank you, Jim. Dark secrets are emerging from a local religious community that's known for its modesty and old world values. PIX11 has learned that tomorrow, a prominent Orthodox Jewish leader will meet with the Brooklyn District Attorney to talk about allegations of sexual abuse in religious schools and homes. A siren signals a call to prayer on Shabbos, the Orthodox Jewish community hurrying home before sundown each Friday. My memory was growing up just like anybody else. I was a very innocent child. But Joel Engelman, now 23, left the insulated world of the strictly observant Hasidim in Williamsburg five years ago after revealing a painful secret. I know very many people that have been abused. It's very hard to come out, especially if you're married or uh, if you don't want to shame your family. The guy that molested me was my principal at the time. He would call me into his uh, office and put me on his lap and abuse me. How old were you when this happened? Eight years old. Engelman says right before this twice weekly ritual started, his parents had complained to the principal about an older student abusing their son. It may have been his cue that I, I was a good victim. Engelman has told his story to Dove Heikend, an Orthodox I Jewish state assemblyman and weekly talk radio host, who says he's collected about a thousand complaints against 60 members of the Orthodox community in the last several months. They don't want to go to the DA, they don't want to go to the police. Fathers who were abusing their daughters from the age of 4 to 14. Heiken recalled this question to one young woman. When I asked her, uh, why didn't you talk to anyone? Why didn't you? She said to me, I didn't know it was wrong. Sexual abuse in the Orthodox community only rarely becomes a police case. One of the most sensational involves Rabbi Avraham Mondrowitz, a former youth counselor seized in Jerusalem last year, more than 20 years after he fled felony sodomy charges in Brooklyn. Mark Weiss says he was a troubled 13-year-old when the outgoing Mondrowitz violated him at the rabbi's house. Conveniently, his entire family was up in the, uh, in the Catskill Mountains. In 2006, Rabbi Yehuda Kolka of Torah to Maimon on Ocean Parkway was taken away in cuffs, charged with multiple counts of sex abuse against students, but he never did jail time. In April of this year, Rabbi Coco made a deal with the Brooklyn DA's office. He would plead guilty to two lesser counts of child endangerment and get sentenced to three years probation. He made no admission of sexual wrongdoing, and he did not have to register as a sex offender. Tonight, the office of Brooklyn District Attorney Charles Hines sent an email saying, in part, the parents of the Coco victim signed statements approving the plea to a misdemeanor because they did not want their children to suffer the trauma of testifying in court. When we visited the yeshiva recently, an employee did not welcome our inquiries. Yeah, no business doing this. This thing was thrown out of the court, and this is a smear campaign. Professor Marcy Hamilton of Cardoza Law School, who wrote a recent book on abused children, believes the politically powerful Orthodox community is reluctant to confront a pervasive problem that the Catholic Church was forced to deal with back in 2002 during its own priest sex abuse scandal. Insular religious communities are even more unlikely uh, to bring in the authorities and therefore more unlikely to stop the vicious cycle of abuse. This afternoon, Rabbi David Niederman from the United Jewish Organization of Williamsburg agreed to speak with us and defended the yeshivas. When something happens, they're alerted to something, they act. And they investigate and that's what they should do. But Joel Engelman says when he and his parents confronted the former principal in April this year, the United Talmudical Academy promised the rabbi would never teach children again. Yet soon after Engelman's 23rd birthday, when the statute of limitations for filing a criminal complaint was up, Engelman says he videotaped the rabbi teaching young children at a Satmar camp upstate. You don't have to be penetrated and raped to have effects for the rest of your life. Sleeping at night, relationships with other people. Mark Weiss says he's not worried at this point about being stigmatized. I have three wonderful children and if, if someone does not want to marry them because of something that happened to their father when he was 13 years old or because I'm doing something about it now, then frankly I don't want them in my families. The Brooklyn District Attorney told us tonight his office has nine separate felony cases pending against members of the Orthodox community. A recent conviction sent another defendant to prison for seven years. Dove Hyken says he wants to educate his community about this issue, but he's under pressure to reveal the names of sexual predators he's been told about. 
If you want information about Survivors for Justice, please go to our website to get the link at WPIX.com. Jim. All right, Mary. To Plaxico Burris.